Hi, I'm Michelle Sterling for Friends of Science Society. The Lancet just issued a report on health and climate change that's making headlines everywhere. They boldly say it's about shaping the health of nations for centuries to come. But in terms of climate change, to do an accurate 10-year forecast, you'd need computing time that is the age of the universe squared. So I don't believe them. The Lancet report is complete with dozens of authors from countries around the world, but strangely it pushes for carbon taxes, renewables, coal phase-out, electric vehicles, rapid decarbonization, and money for the Green Climate Fund to finance adaptation. This shows a shocking lack of due diligence. When you look at Western developed nations where oil, natural gas, and coal have proliferated, longevity and health and standards of living went up. First of all, Everything in modern medicine relies on the product streams from oil, natural gas, and coal. All these special, sterile, single-use plastics, high-tech equipment, advanced materials for various joint replacements, specialized diagnostics like CT scans and MRIs, and the massive, high-quality electrical power with no dips or surges that makes advanced surgeries possible. And then carbon pricing? What are they thinking at the Lancet? Carbon taxes, coal phase-out, and renewables have made life misery for millions of people in Britain, Germany, and Ontario, pushing them into heat or eat poverty. The Lancet appears to be unaware of the comprehensive health study of 2011-2012, which showed that electricity was recognized by the UK Department of Health as the most vital of all infrastructure services, because without it, most other services will not function. So renewables can't power the grid. They need conventional backup 100% of the time. Every single aspect of modern medicine relies on conventional energy from coal, natural gas, hydro, or nuclear because it's reliable and cost-effective. Wind and solar are not. Just think of this for a second. You'd never want to find yourself in surgery when the wind stops or the sun goes down. And while The Lancet advocates for rapid decarbonization, Professor Michael J. Kelly of Cambridge asserts that this would cause mass deaths. So much for that Hippocratic oath. Do no harm. The Lancet is obsessed with global warming, a phenomenon that has paused for the past 20 years despite a rise of carbon dioxide, effectively disproving the greenhouse gas theory of climate change. But you'd think an expert body would examine all the evidence about climate damage to human health. It's odd that The Lancet never ran across this multi-country, in-depth study of the impact of cold on people. Thousands more die from cold than heat. And as Dr. Madhav Kandekar relates, cold snaps are increasing, especially in former tropical spots. People really suffer and die because they're not prepared. They have no central heating, and those who light fires inside, well, sooner or later, they die from this very real pollution. Isn't it curious that The Lancet didn't advocate solely for improvements in the advancement of medicine? What are they doing pushing carbon pricing and renewables? Maybe it's because the people who want a global cap-and-trade system are discouraged that ordinary people really don't care about climate change hysteria anymore. When you look at surveys around the world, most people have bigger concerns, like the yellow vests, the gilets jaunes in France. They don't want carbon taxes. They don't want electric cars. They don't want climate change ideology. People do care about health. In fact, it's number one on the list in Canada. Climate change is dead last. So it looks like The Lancet was putting climate change on the healthcare resuscitator by combining the two subjects but I'd say The Lancet has delivered a misdiagnosis. Get a second opinion. We've got a few reports that you should read to better understand these complex issues of power generation, affordable power, and human health. For Friends of Science Society, I'm Michelle Sterling.